the conversation. I'm going to use a chair to help me help you understand. I don't know if I like that, but we'll see. Okay, this is Jesus. Okay, are you with me? So, here's Jesus. This is where the Pharisees are. This is the Pharisees. <laughs> this is the other Jews. Not the Pharisees, okay? The Pharisees are over there. These are the other Jews, okay? Now, how am I going to do this? Okay. So, so far we've been talking about what in this study? You should know. I am. So we, we've had a lot of references from the Old Testament. And we have... <coughs> so we have all this from the Old Testament. Different names of God. There is the names that God himself uses to describe himself. God uses these names to describe who he is. So we went through this and we used pictures to help us understand who God is. Now, then we move to the New Testament. Now, I want to remind you that every time Jesus says, I am something, it references something in the Old Testament, a name of Yahweh. Jesus uses the phrase, I am, when he's ref referencing something in the Old Testament. And sometimes it's clear, and sometimes it's not so clear. But anyway... We've already talked about two. What are the two we talked about so far? The bread of life and the light. Okay, so first is the bread and second is the light. So I am the light of the world. And we looked in John chapter 8 and then again in chapter 9. Chapter 8 we see spiritual darkness. Chapter 9, we see physical darkness, a blind man. So what is the spiritual darkness in chapter 8? What happened? Do you remember? I know, it was two weeks ago, and some of you are still f have your head filled with spiritual gifts, and you don't remember what you ate for breakfast this morning. Okay, I understand, but I'm going to remind you. Oh, let's talk about where this happened. Jesus was, where was Jesus born? Here in Bethlehem. He went to Egypt for a while. Then he came back and he lived in Nazareth. Right here, Nazareth. This whole area here is called Galilee. So this is Galilee, and then Nazareth is in it. 
It's the name of the city where Jesus was born and grew up, Nazareth. And then Jerusalem, he occasionally went to Jerusalem, where the temple was, where they feasted. And when Jesus was growing up, he went to the temple at the age of eight with his family. So he would sometimes go to Jerusalem. And he started his ministry with the miracle of turning the water to wine. And most people agree that that was in Cana, here, in the north. And then he went to Jerusalem where he healed someone on the Sabbath, and people were not happy about that. So then he left and went back up to Galilee again, and that was where he first talked about the bread of life. And then he went back to Jerusalem, and now he is at the temple teaching in the temple. And the Pharisees, this is my sign for a Pharisee, a religious leader at the time, the Pharisees showed up. And what happened when he was brought before the Pharisees? I wouldn't call it that. The woman who was captured in adultery, who was taken in adultery. And many people called her a prostitute, but we don't have any evidence of that. But she was, she was caught in adultery. She was called in the act of adultery. Do you understand what that means? So she was caught and she was cast before Jesus. And the Pharisees asked Jesus, should we stone her? Moses said, stone her. What do you say we ought to do? So they were testing him to try to catch him in his response. So in their gut, they didn't like Jesus. And what did they do? What did Jesus do? He just wrote on the ground. He wrote in the dust with his finger. And several of the Pharisees left, but there were still Pharisees in the crowd. And the Jewish then he said, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned me? Then neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So she got up, dusted herself off, and left. And Jesus went on and continued teaching. And he said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. She was in darkness. She had spiritual darkness. If you don't walk darkness, follow me. I'm the light. And you'll have the light of life. <coughs> Sound good? The light of life? Sounds good, right? The Jews didn't think so. Now, this is where we begin a dialogue, a back and forth, a challenge. The Pharisees said, You just said this, now prove it. And Jesus, you, thou bearest record of thyself. We don't accept that. You said you were the, you're the light of the world. Who else says that? Why should we believe you? Prove it. And Jesus says, You're right. 
but my record is true. Why? Because I know where I came from, and I know where I'm going. But you don't know where I came from, and you don't know where I'm going. And the Pharisees, wait, Jesus. We judge after the flesh. Here was this woman. I didn't judge her. But if I do judge, my judgment is true. You know, you judge me, why are you judging me? Judging anybody. So why are you judging me? But if I do judge, true, because I am not alone. I am the Father that sent me. This is interesting. This is your law. <clears throat> it's written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that beareth witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. That's two witnesses. That means it's true. Now, come on. Do you think they accepted that? No. And honestly, if I was there, I probably wouldn't have accepted it either. You know, okay, Jesus. It's the word. But that's not enough for them. Then they said, okay, let's check up on your father. Where's your father? Jesus said, you don't know who I am, and you don't know my father. If you had known me, you would also have known my father. So what does, so understand, he's using the word father. Father. Just the natural, normal word father. Not heavenly father. He doesn't say anything about heavenly father. He just said, my father. I'm one witness. My father's another witness. Well, fine. Where's your father? <coughs> well, you don't know who I am, and you don't know who my father is. But my father is a witness. Jesus was teaching in the temple. They wouldn't accept that. John said the time had not come for him. They wanted to take, to take him and arrest him. But his, John said his hour was not yet come. And Jesus went on and said, I go my way. You, not just the Pharisees, but he's talking to everyone. You will seek me, but you will die in your sins. Whether I go, ye cannot come. Notice the difference here. Then said the Jews, who? The Jews, not the Pharisees, not the leaders, the Jews, the Jewish people, the common everyday Jewish people who had decided to go to the temple that day. The Jews said, well, is he going to kill himself? Because he said, where I go, you can't come. But Jesus said, no, let me explain. Let me explain. I'll explain, okay. 
So as Mark, I'm going to give you an explanation. Jewish culture and custom and religion was if you kill yourself, you couldn't go to heaven. There was no afterlife for you if you killed yourself. So they assumed that they followed the law, they went to the temple, they did what they were supposed to do. That meant Jesus said, if I'm going somewhere, but we can't go with him, does that mean he's going to kill himself? Is that why we can't go with him? So the Jews were confused. What are you talking about? So Jesus says, okay, let me clarify. You are from beneath. I am from above. You are from this world. I am not of this world. I'm an alien? <coughs> Jesus says, I'm not from this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. If ye believe not that I am he, if, so if ye, you Jews, believe not that I am, Jesus, am he, am he, who is he, the Messiah, Jesus is claiming to be the Messiah, if they didn't believe it, that I am he, the one, then they would die in their sins. So, after this clarification, he said, who is he? They said, who are you? Jesus says, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he, not, he's not saying who he is, but he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard from him. They understood not. They didn't understand that he was talking about God. They didn't understand that. And the Jews were saying, I want to believe. I want to follow you. I want to, I want to hear what you're saying, but you're still, I'm still confused. And je said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, the Anointed One, the Messiah, then shall ye know that I am he, who, the Son of Man, the Messiah, and I, that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father, he does not saying Heavenly Father, as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things, and he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Now they're starting to get it. He's talking about God. They're catching on. Oh, Jesus. As Jesus spake these words, many believed on him. They said, oh, okay, hey. This is the Messiah. And many believe that. But they're still thinking about it. Okay, okay. Um, 
then Jesus says to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So we all, they all said, we want to be free, right? But they answered and said, wait a minute. We're Abraham's seed. Why do we need to be free? God's given us this land. God's given us this lineage. Why do we need to be free? Why are you saying we need to be free? And they were puzzled by this. When were we ever enslaved? Right, the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt, but we were set free. We're not in bondage anymore. Uh-uh. And Jesus said, no, no. If you sin, you are a slave to sin. The servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. <clears throat> if the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know you that ye are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. You're not satisfied with my message. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Now the Jews are really confused. What? Your father and our father? You're talking about your father and talking about our father. The Jews... See, Abraham. <coughs> Abraham is our father. What are you talking about, our father? Abraham's our father. You know what your father does? Well, Abraham was good. Abraham was righteous. He had faith. What are you talking about? And Jesus said unto them, No, you're not Abraham's children. If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now you're not Abraham's children. You seek to kill me. And what did I do? I told you the truth. And now you want to kill me? For these words, I'm telling you the truth that I received from God. Abraham didn't do that. That means you are not Abraham's children because you are doing the works of your father. And they said, we're not of mixed blood. That's what this means. To be born of fornication. That means, you know, our, our fathers didn't go and sleep with any foreign women. We're not of mixed blood. We have one father, and that's God. Now, they just said Abraham was their father, and now they're changing their message a little bit, saying God's our father. And Jesus is ready for them. First you said Abraham was your father. And I said, well, why don't you do what Abraham did? And then I say, God is... Then you say, God is your father. Jesus says, if God were your father, you would love me. 
Now, this is a but here he says it very clear. I proceeded forth and came from God. I myself, I didn't come from myself. God sent me. Why? You don't understand my message. I do about my father, but you don't understand. And you don't love me? If you don't love God, you don't love me. Why don't you understand my speech? Because you can't hear my words. You are spiritually deaf. Why? Because you are of your father who? The devil. The devil. And he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. He is a liar and the father of lies. So, Jesus has them now. Do you think they were happy with that? You're calling me a child of the devil? Do you think they're happy with that? You're going to accept that? He says, I tell you the truth. You believe me not. Because I tell you the truth, you don't believe me. Jesus says, have I sinned at all? Tell me what sin I might have committed. Tell me what I did. You can't. But if I tell you the truth, why don't you believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye, therefore, hear them not. Be, you are of Satan. That means you're not of God. And that group of people that just believed in him, they said, oh yeah. Now Jesus says, you believe in me? Follow me. I'll set you free. Oh, wait, that's confusing. Now they're confused. They don't accept that completely. Why? Because of pride. And it's interesting, the sin of pride right there is the same pride that Satan had. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Look, I told you. See? We said that you are a Samaritan. And you have a devil. That means that you are not of the same blood as us. We are real Jews. What are you? You're not like us. You must be a Samaritan, mixed blood. Maybe you have a devil in you. Hmm. And Jesus says, No, I don't have a devil. I honor my father. And you dishonor me. I seek not mine own glory. I'm not trying to glorify myself. There is one that seeketh and judgeth, and that's the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death.
do you die? I don't want to die. Do you want to live? It's simple. I'm giving you the truth. Just accept it. Allow my word to change your life. They still didn't, that still didn't satisfy them. They asked him more questions. They said, now we know you have a devil. <coughs> Why? Abraham is dead. And the prophets, they're dead. And how can you say, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste death? Are you greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead? What are you saying? So, there were many prophets that had said, I am from God. I'm from God. I have a message. I have the truth. This is a message from God. A message from the Lord. An angel of the Lord told me, and I'm telling you. Or I'm showing it to you in my life. There were many prophets who said that. Who said that I'm from the Lord. And Jesus just said, he's from the Father. So, he's making the same case, that he's from the Father. And they said, yeah, but God's our Father too. What exactly are you saying? Are you saying... Are you talking about Abraham? Wait a minute. You said, if we follow your word, we'll never die? Well, Abraham died. The prophets died. Who are you? Are you greater than Abraham? That's our father. Are you greater than our father? And Jesus' response, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Ye say that he is your God. Right? We're talking about the Father yet ye have not known him. I know him. If I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar just like you. But I know him. And keep his saying. And then, he really hits them with this. Your father is, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. So now they're really starting to think. And remembering their Old Testament. <clears throat> Abraham saw his day? What was God's promise to Abraham? He promised him the land. And the lineage... the family, the descendants, and the Messiah. And Jesus says, He was thrilled to see my day. He was thrilled to see the Messiah. He saw it, and 
He was happy about it. He rejoiced. And the people were asking him, Have you seen Abraham? You're not even 50 years old yet. Did you see Abraham? And Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, notice was, past tense, right? They've already said Abraham's dead. So, was. Before Abraham was, I am. He calls himself, I am. I am and the people said no way all the stones that they had piled up getting ready to stone in adultery They took up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst, the midst of them. So he escaped and he left the temple. And they were, they were looking for him. Where did he go? Why was this such a big deal, Mark? What's the point? Jesus claimed to be God. I am the Messiah. I am God. You have two choices. Well, really three choices. You can say, I don't believe this. Reject the Bible. That's your first choice. Your choice number two, you can say, well, Jesus wasn't really who he said he was. He was just a good man. No, you can't be a good man and make this kind of claim. If I said, I am God, before Abraham was, I am if it's not true, it means that I'm a liar. And that's what he said. So if this is not true, then he's a liar. If he's a liar, how can he be good? That's not possible. So second option is not possible. Third option is to believe that it's true, that he is who he says he is. And most of us here already believe that Jesus is telling the truth. We know that. But it's important to understand the people out in the world in society today don't believe in Jesus. But most of them think Jesus was a good man. You can't have them both. Either he is who he says he is or he's a liar. So which is it? Which do you want? Okay, Jesus claimed that I am, this is what he said, I am. 
not maybe I am, not I could be one of, no, I am. Either it's true or it's not. You have to make a decision. I accept that Jesus said he said I am and it's true or it's not. Now. Notice Jesus says before Abraham was, not I was. Jesus says before Abraham was, I am. I am Yahweh. I always have been over 2,000 years old, right? You could say that. Abraham lived 2,000 years before. People's minds were blown. They couldn't accept that. They said they can't be unless Jesus is God. And they weren't prepared for that. So, no wonder they tried to stone him. So what about you? Well, okay, Mark, that's a great story. That's great, dramatic. I love the excitement. That's wonderful. What's the point here? How does, it, how does this apply to me? Let's make some points. Through, throughout this, we'll have some some applications here and we have some wonderful quotes so let's take a look Jesus says believe in me or die in your sins that's number one number two continue in the word and know the truth number three are you a child of the devil or a child of God number four Follow Jesus and never know death. Number five, trust and believe Jesus. He is the I am. He is Yahweh. And many people, many religions, many groups don't want to accept that Jesus Christ is the God man. They won't accept that. But most say, oh, Jesus was a good man. He was a prophet. The Muslims say that Jesus was a great prophet of God, of Allah. That Jesus was a prophet of Allah. But how could he be a prophet if he's saying, I'm God? How could he be a good prophet? That's not possible. Jehovah's Witnesses don't accept that Jesus is God. He said he was, but they don't believe him. But it's clear. For you and for me, I encourage you. I know that most of you already believe. I know your testimonies. I know... Uh, your faith in Jesus. But what about the people around you? Do they know? Have you shared with them? Or are you keeping it quiet? Why are you keeping it quiet? Because you don't believe or because you're scared? Or what? <coughs> Jesus wasn't scared. He was very blunt about it. He was in the temple with the religious leaders right there. And the Jews were all ready to kill him, according to this story. And he said, ah, we better leave. Better head out the back way. That was wise. Not, not cowardly. That was wise. So... Let's close here, and in my closing, I'm going to advise you 
to understand and accept that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is God, the Son of God. Jesus is God. Without him, you will die in your sins. It's a promise. Jesus says plat out if you die in your sin, if you die, if you don't believe me, you'll die in your sins. There's no gray area. It's black and white. Believe it or not. It's your choice. So let's close with prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Your word is clear. Jesus' words are clear. He made a clear claim. He said, I am God. I am the Messiah. I am who I said I am. He says, what great God. And then he was lifted up on the cross. Saw and knew. When the Roman soldiers could see that this was truly, this man was truly the Son of God. Wow. <coughs> Bless us today as we seek you and we seek to understand and we seek knowledge of you. We, we hope and pray to be close to you, to dedicate our lives to you. Other things are important. Our families are important. Our work is important. Our lives are important. But there is no greater or more important thing than following you, Lord. Call us to follow you. In Jesus' name I pray.